you talked about supplements, you know, B12, vitamin D, K, zinc, iodine, EPA, um, rather than having six bottles, um, could you, uh, and tell me slowly so I can write it down, one or two manufacturers of a vitamin that's for vegans so that it has those specific six ingredients in one capsule? Great question. I've been on this mission to find the perfect supplement for 17 years. And I've talked to many companies, worked with many companies. Now is a great time. There are so many companies out there that are doing this. So if you just look at those notable nutrients, I don't really want to recommend anything kind of publicly, but um, I do, you know, there's, there's a couple of them. If you message me, I'll, me I'll answer your question, but um, I would look for those ingredients and look for the one that you like that's accessible to you. There are some out there now that are good and um, they're getting better. I'll say that. Thank you so much for that, Juliana. And up next, we have Joy K. Joy, I'm going to unmute you now. Welcome, Joy. Well, thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for a thorough and thoroughly enjoyable presentation. My question is for a person who takes Synthroid for thyroid nodules. Is iodine indicated or contraindicated for such a situation? Well, you need to, thank you, Joy. That's a very good question. And you definitely need iodine. Iodine is very important for your thyroid health, but you need to ask your physician about any contraindications for your specific medication. I know that with Synthroid, Synthroid is going to be responsible for your your thyroid function, but iodine is still an, an essential nutrient. So I would talk to your physician. I don't want to ever make recommendations based on medications because that's uh, outside of my scope of practice, but I'm, I'm, there's gotta be a way to get iodine that you need. So if you want to get it from a whole food source, instead, you could just use a sprinkle of iodized salt in your diet, or you could look at the um, sea vegetables and just do it from that rather than supplementing, but probably a supplement is fine. I would definitely talk to your healthcare provider um, specifically about your medication and your dose and all that, just to confirm that. Thanks, Juliana. Um, up next, we have Denise R. Denise, I will unmute you now and welcome. What's your question? Hi, Denise, are you with us? Oh gosh. So Denise, hopefully you can hear me. I see we have unmuted you, but we're not hearing you. Um, I'm going to just move on to the next person, but I wonder if you can, uh, I'm going to lower your hand and if you can maybe work out that issue on your end and then jump back on with another hand raise and we'll try to get right back to you. Uh, let me do that. And so next we have uh, Janet P and Janet. Hi. Hi, thank you, Juliana. Great presentation. My question is regarding families that want to transition to a plant-based diet and they have, uh, you know, children at any age. I'm, um, you know, some people come to me and ask me since um, I, uh, you know, have been doing this for a few years and they, they say their kids don't like vegetables. They're used to, you know, the American diet. How do you do you have any suggestions of how parents can transition their families and do they need the same supplements as adults or do children need different, do you have sources on your website as far as what children at different ages uh, are recommended as far as the supplements? Thank you so much, Janet. That's a great question. Uh, on my website, in my, actually in the Plant-Based Nutrition Idiot's Guide, I, in both editions, the original and the second edition, I have that back there. Um, I have a whole section for families, for kids, for baby, infants, for pregnancy, then infants, and then um, across the lifespan. That's, that's laid out in the Plant-Based Nutrition Idiot's Guide. And that's still available. That was updated a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago. And um, for families transitioning, here's what I've worked with families. I've worked with families now for many, many, many years, helping the transition process. Here is the, the most successful highlights. It's everyone on the families on the same page, the parents are, are the, the, the people that are parenting and in charge of food in the home are all on the same page. That's number one. Otherwise it's really hard myself included. I went through this with my ex-husband. <laughs> so anyway, um, if everyone's on the same page, it is so easy because I've seen so many families where they're like, they want to do this and they're doing this. And this is what we eat. And this is our food. And, and the kids are like, Oh, this is what we eat. And they just enjoy eating this way. And so the transition looks like 
the same thing as you would do by yourself. You're finding recipes that you love. And then you find recipes that your children love and more children friendly recipes. That's also all this is in my book. The nutrition, just the nutrition, by the way, is all in the book too. And, um, it children need less, but depending on their age. So I don't want to just give out nutrients. Each one I'll be, we'll be here all day. That is like, I just use the, I, the Institute of medicine recommendations for dosing for children's nutrients, but yeah, they need less. There are children's supplements specifically for vegan children. That is, it's really important for if they're for the multivitamin, but in terms of the diet, they need the same types of food. They're, they're probably going to eat less because they're smaller people, but it depends on their age and it changes throughout the lifespan. The, the keys to helping the children transition, not only are the parents being on the same page, it's about getting them involved. I, I did a video with my daughter. I love it because now she's bigger than me. My kids are now bigger than me. It's so weird. But when my daughter was tiny, we did this little kids cook Monday video and we were making pasta and she was so tiny and just getting them involved in the kitchen is very helpful. You know, like getting them to like get excited about different ingredients or having them grow a garden or an herb garden or going to a farmer's market. I used to take my kids to a farmer's market uh, begrudgingly, but you know, they didn't get as excited as I was hoping, but most of the kids that I work with, they do some kids that they want to be in the kitchen, actually cooking and putting together things or being responsible for choosing the recipes that they're eating. The other thing that seems to be very successful is having either a buffet of all the healthy foods, you know, available. And so that the kids get to choose on their plate, um, not having junk food in the house. Oh my gosh. That was my big concern with my, my house was that I had all this healthy food in the house. And then the said X would bring in the, the junk food. And of course the kids are going to choose the junk food. So you want, if you ideally can, you have a very colorful house and kitchen filled with all of these like ready to grab veggies and hummus and guacamole and things that kids like kids love to dip kids love you know like celery sticks with peanut butter and raisins on top like fun things that kids will enjoy making their own pizzas making their own taco bar making their own burrito bar make it fun and delicious and nutritious and it's just oh and when you're at the table you know here's the other analogy is that or not analogy. This is what a lot of people do. The, the mom's over there eating, you know, her, you know, bread and butter. And she's saying, eat your broccoli, eat your broccoli. But the kid's like, well, I just want the bread and butter. So you have to be the, the most important thing is to be the lighthouse, not the tugboat to be the example of what your want, kids want to do. And they will do as you do rather than do as you say, you know, that we're all like that. We, we watch and we're taking it in. Kids are taking it in so profoundly. And so be the, be what you want your child to be. That's the case for everything in life, right? But especially with how you're eating, they're watching you. And just, you know, when you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, this broccoli is so delicious. Like, and then, you know, they're going to be like, oh, it's delicious. I want to, is that really delicious? Let me try that. You know, unless you're like, oh, I'm eating my broccoli because I have to eat my broccoli. They're going to see that too. So it's all about your attitude and how excited you get about the food and what you have available to them. Kids are very malleable. And of course, when they go out in the real world, it's impossible to keep them in that bubble. So give them a foundation at home. But oh my gosh, I've seen so many families and I've helped so many families transition to this way of life. And I've watched, it's so cute because now it's been so many years I've been doing this, but I've watched, I've had clients come to me pregnant and then they went through the breastfeeding and then they went through the, you know, the toddlerhood and the kids going to school. And then it's just so fun to watch them across the lifespan, eat this way and adopt this way of eating. And they all grow up healthy and strong and they all become athletes and they all, you know, they're all, you don't, know, they grow up just as tall and big and strong as the omnivorous, their omnivorous friends. But um, they have this special place in their heart for eating a healthy diet that is also very light on the planet. And it's a wonderful, wonderful gift you can give to your children. Mm -hmm.